What quilter can resist a beautiful scrappy quilt filled with all kinds of fabrics and scraps and stash and orphan blocks and anything we can find to put in it and it will be a gorgeous quilt and let's say it's a free pattern. It doesn't get better than that. But what do you think about a half square triangle scrappy quilt? That's what I want to share with you today. But once you make the quilt, then what? How are you going to quilt it? Well, that's the answer I have for you. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and you're going to love this quilting design for a very easy quilt, for a beautiful finish. You're going to love it. I'll walk you through the quilting process and we'll put some binding on and before you know it there will be a finished quilt on your table and you're going to absolutely adore it. So I'm anxious to show this to you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited to be starting the quilting on this particular quilt. Oh my goodness, it's bright, it's colorful, it's beautiful and I'm having fun with my thread selection. So the back of this quilt, I'll show you in a few minutes when I'm actually doing the quilting, um, is sort of a creamy vine print. And so it's very neutral, but the front, of course, is this huge splash of every color and pattern imaginable. Now what I'm going to do is quilt along the edges of the Tri not the triangles, what are they, the diamonds or the square seam. I'm not going to go in the ditch, but I'm going to come in maybe about a half inch. And then these are concentric squares, so I'll just do that round and round throughout the quilt. The challenging part is going to be the center, because as I'm working in the center, I have all this quilt around me that I need to maneuver. Once I get out a couple rows, and you know, I'm doing out here, it's going to be easier to turn the quilt. What I want to do is get started in the middle right here, but first I just have to show you these threads. Aren't they wonderful? This is going to be on the back of the quilt. Like I said, it's neutral, so I thought having some fun, colorful thread would really make this quilt interesting. Then for the front, I have this uh, purple and navy blue variegated, which is wonderful. So it's, it's going to stand out on most all the fabrics except for the darkest, but it's going to just add another design element to the, you know, the entire quilt by having that extra thread in there. So I'm excited to get this going. I have my walking foot on. I have a brand new needle tucked in there. I have my quilting gloves. Everything's ready to go. Let me get my uh, machine threaded. I'll be right back and we'll get started on this. Okay, we've got thread. We're ready to go. I'm going to come in about a half inch from the seam and I'll start right on this seam here. So first I'm going to pull my bottom thread up and that just keeps you from getting any knots underneath when you start your sewing. So I'm going to pull that up through. There we go. And I'm just going to tuck that thread over here. I'm not going to put my gloves on just yet. I want to make sure I can get around this corner and get started before, because gloves, it's hard to handle the thread. So I usually do the first few stitches and get myself started before I get into any uh, any glove action. So I'm going to make sure my needle is going down right where I want it. And it's going to kind of do a back tack here. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm started. Now I can put my gloves on and we're ready to go. So I'm at about a half inch from the seam. And so I'm going to watch this spot right here. And I need to kind of keep that distance the same as I'm going around in order to have a consistent uh, quilting line. Now this has been spray basted. I did that a couple days ago. And in the meantime, it's been draped over the sewing machine. It just kind of helps to loosen up the batting so it's not um, folded or creased or wanting to curl up or fold over <laughs> from being in the package. So let's go ahead and get started. And I want to stop right in the seam. There we go. Now I'm going to turn my quilt and hopefully I'm not going to knock over the camera. There's a lot of quilt here in tight quarters. I think I can do this. And I have my quilt turn. I'm going to pull this thread taut and trim it off. There we go. 
and again I just want to make sure this stays flat because I'm turning my quilt and it's tight here in the middle there's more of a chance that I can get I'm sorry, I have a thread stuck to me. There's more of a chance that I can maybe twist the fabric underneath. I just need to be really careful with that. Now, you'll notice I'm a little farther away than I want to be. So what I'm going to do is lift my needle up, and I'm just going to move it over this way. So I'm a little bit closer, but at the same time, keeping it in line with where it was. Okay. Yeah, it probably doesn't make a big difference, but it makes me feel better. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to lay my hands out like this. And as I'm doing it, I put a bit of pressure just to hold all the layers of the quilt in place as I'm sewing. This is a great way to make sure you don't get any tucks on the back and it just keeps everything nice and smooth so as you're quilting you get a good even feed. So let me go ahead and go to the next corner. And I'm just going to sew all the way through. I can't quite get to the corner without adjusting my hands so I'm just going to do it very carefully because you don't want to, you know, turn yourself at an angle as you're sewing in the middle here. You want it to be nice and straight. So I'm just kind of making sure I'm going in the right direction. Oop, I got off just a little bit there. Go down here to the seam. And we're going to turn it around again. The turning isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually working quite well. What I do want to show you is where I stopped right there in the center of that line. I did get, you know, like a, a back stitch sort of sew over itself. It's very minute and it's really not going to be seen, but it's there and it's okay. I can live with that. So there are things that occur as you're quilting and you have to decide what's important to you and where you're going to want to really focus to get the best results and when you are willing to step back and say this isn't working I need to start change or tear out stitches and that's always the absolute last resort. My apologies I came around that last corner and I forgot to hit record so I'm at this corner where I've I started and what I'm going to do is sew down this line here this seam to get to this corner because then I'm going to start that same uh, internal quilting along that line. Now if you've seen me do much quilting before, you know stitching in the ditch is not my forte. So I'm just going to take this nice and slow. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. It's pretty close quarters here. I'm going to take this nice and slow and uh, just, you know, do what I can do. So here we go. All right, not doing too bad here. I'm just going easy and making sure that this seam lines up in the center of the presser feet and I want it to be right in here. So far so good. I'll just keep coming down to within about a half an inch. Boy, I take my eye off for one moment to pull a thread and my needle wavers. I'm telling you. There we go. Not too much, but we get out of line just the littlest bit. And this is where you just need to kind of eyeball that half inch rather than try and measure. Once you get around a few times, you're going to get um, pretty comfortable with visually measuring where you need to go. So now I'm going to turn and come over this way. And let me see if I can do that. Just to give you an idea of what we've got going here. Okay, and I did not go far enough. I thought I did. So I'm just going to come down another couple stitches. Hold my quilt out nice and taut so I'm not going to get any wrinkles. Just about three stitches should do it. There we are. 
Okay. Now you'll notice I have a couple safety pins. I did have a spot on the back where it, it wanted to crease and even though I pressed it, it still was being kind of a nuisance. So I put the pins in along that line so I knew as I was quilting this, I won't have a problem with getting anything stuck because I know there's a fussy spot under there and as long as I keep my fabric held taut, we should be good to go. All right, come on, get in there. All right, here we go. Now the inside was just the a four patch square. As I move outward, my lengths are going to get longer than I'm going to go straight. Now you can see here where I really miss that corner. So as I'm quilting this, I kind of need to compensate as I go. So you can see this corner doesn't line up very well. So I'm going to come in where I am there and then I'm just going to, you know, slowly meander and over the course of a number of inches make that all kind of equal out. There we go, that went pretty well. So I'm coming up to my next corner right here. And that's one thing with all these fabrics, you really have to look for those corners because there's so much going on with all these prints, you can miss it and just keep going. All right, so if I come right into that seam, then I should be in the right spot for sewing around the next direction. There we go. We're just going to make sure everything's nice and flat. All right, with everything in place, we'll go ahead and go up this next side. One thing that you'll find when you're quilting like this, I keep my needle down so that I don't lose my place, that the thread doesn't pull out and everything goes every which way. But as you're turning your quilt, the fabric tension changes. And I find that when I go to start sewing, when I lift my needle for that first stitch, sometimes the quilt can move a little and you find yourself sewing straight and then you get a little jag, a little jog there because your needle wasn't exactly in the same place. So the best remedy for that is to just get your fabric, your quilt sandwich in place, kind of rest it so it's not pulling in any direction or the other, and then you should be able to get a nice good stitch. I'm looking forward to getting out a couple rows more because then there's going to be a lot of nice long stretches to quilt. My apologies, my camera keeps shutting itself off or it turns off the recording. I'm a quilter, not a techie, so I sometimes have these issues. But let's go ahead. I'm, I'm on my second round at this point and I'm going to go to the next corner and work my way there. Going around the corner hasn't been as challenging as I thought it would be, but this is only a lap quilt, 60 inches, and that definitely makes it far more maneuverable. All right, as I come to this, I put my needle down, I turn. And I get my fabric laid out nice and straight and flat. Make sure there's no wrinkles or anything scrunched up. And I also just, you know, kind of make sure everything is where it needs to be. So I have my pin here on this side. You can't quite see it. So I know I don't have any problems at this particular area. There's just that one crease across the back that I couldn't get out. And I want to make sure it doesn't get caught up in the uh, quilting. So let's go ahead and do this next round. This is the 
the fourth side of this particular square and then we'll move out one more level. One thing about this kind of a quilting pattern where you're going around, you're sewing across every corner in the quilt. So if there are any questionable corners, you're going to see it. So <laughs> you do have to just sort of get past that and realize, hey, whatever we see is what it is. That's what it's going to be. And I'm okay with it. So don't don't worry about as you're quilting what the corners may or may not look like. Not everything's going to be perfect. And with a quilt this busy, few are going to look up close. They're going to see it from afar and see the design. And this quilting pattern is really going to keep the focus on the design. All right, so I made it back to a corner and we're going to come around this way, come straight down to the next point, which is right down here. So let's go ahead, make sure everything's nice and flat. I don't feel any wrinkles and just work it, work it through. Did you see what I just did? I went right past my seam allowance. So let's, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift my needle and I'm just going to go back. I'm going to pull my thread out a bit so I have a little room to maneuver. And I'm going to put my needle down where I want my half inch quilt line to be. Now, I'm going to take care of this when I'm coming back on the uh, on the uh, next round. So let me go ahead and get around this and then we'll talk about what to do there. I've come back around this square and I'm just going to sew to this point. But first what I'm going to do is cut the top thread off and then I'm going to cut the back one off once I'm finished quilting. So. Now that that's cut, I can finish sewing right into that spot, join up my stitching, and now I'm going to sew down to the next corner. And I'm going to go ahead and just sew over that little bit that's there already, because that's not going to be, um, you know, a huge issue by, by any means. Um, not terribly visible. I just want to get everything nice and straight. So I'm going to sew over that and come down to my next point. And I almost did it again. I get to going on that straight line and I forget to turn. Okay, so we want to come around this way. All right, the quilt is ready to go on the next round. And you can always make sure you're in the right place by, you know, watching the quilting over here. Because if you'll notice, it would have been easy for me to kind of get caught up and go in this direction or even over here. So you just want to keep an eye on the placement of where you are so you are going to get the correct pattern and it's you know something because the fabric is so busy it's something that you really have to watch in order to keep yourself in line but I think this is going to be worth it it's going to be a great great pattern and you see the stitch in the ditch I didn't do too bad it's pretty much in there so I'll go ahead and do this turn and then when I come back we're going to be going off the edges we're pretty much done the biggest part of the, the uh, center square and then we'll go to the outer edges and I'll show how that works. So you can see this isn't difficult. It may be a little challenging to maneuver initially because there's a lot to move around. But once you get started, it goes really well. I've gone around four full squares. I'm going to make my last run down to the edge to do concentric square number six. And actually, I overstitched it, doggone it, that's a, what, almost the third time. I, I got caught myself once in between there. So what I'll do is I'll just go back and I'll 
stitch there. But one thing I did want to show you is I needed to piece my batting. And I don't know if you've ever done this, but there's a zigzag stitch that does three stitches each direction. And it is perfect. It's like a darning stitch. And it is perfect for putting the batting together. All you do is butt the pieces side by side. You don't want to overlap it. And you can just see how nice and smooth that is. It works out really well. Okay, so let me show you what I'm going to do here. I am going to turn this around and get ready to sew this next corner. And I'm just going to make sure that my thread is underneath and it's pulled aside so I don't have to worry about it getting caught. And I'm going to just lower my needle where I want it to be. There we are. Okay. And so now I'll do the next round. And then all I have left to do are the corner pieces. And I'll show you that when I get to that point. I'm coming around to the final corner. This is the one where I over sewed and went right off the edge. So I'm going to come in and meet right here. I'm going to cut that off. And what I want to show you is on the back because I probably have a little loop where that seam started. And okay, so here's my thread. So this is where it goes off the edge of the quilt. And this is where it joined up. And all I have to do is pull that nice and snug and it looks pretty good. There we go. So that's just where the end will be. And when I sew over that, it's going to lock it in place. So we are good to go. And I'm just going to finish up to this corner. And then we're going to start doing our, our angles, our corners outside the concentric square. So what I'll do is I'll show you a quick picture of where we are and where we're going. So you get a visual of what that looks like. What I am going to do is just sew, turn this a little bit, and sew up that seam just a little bit. Put a couple stitches in just to hold everything. All right, so we have done, I think it was six squares, five or six, and then we are going to now, where's my thread? Oh, okay, I guess I cut it on the top. We are now going to go ahead and work to the corners. So let me uh, show you that step and we're going to have this finished before you know it. All right, I'm getting ready to do my first outside corner and I'm just going to start right at the edge of my quilt because this is where the quilting is done on the diamonds. And so when I finished, I just sewed right out to that edge and now I'm going to come this way and I'm just going to go back and forth and I'll show you how easy this is going to be. All we're going to do is sew from one side to the other. It's all straight stitching. There's no turning. And I'm just holding my fabric nice and taut so I won't get any wrinkles. And this is for the wrinkles underneath. If I just sew without, you know, or excuse me, if I quilt without giving this a little bit of a stretch, I'm concerned I might get a few pleats or tucks underneath. And this just helps hold the fabric right where it needs to be. thread there it doesn't want to come out and I find that it's just better for me to pull threads as I'm quilting because then I won't miss them <laughs> if I if I wait till the next round or I'm doing something else there's a good chance I might might not see it all right I'm down to my last block and I'm going to sew right off the edge just like that. Now, what makes this 
much easier on this end of things is that I can just cut my threads and I'll get back and do that a little closer after and then just pull my fabric back and do the corner again. So I have three or four rows that I need to do this on. Each one gets shorter. So this is why I like doing the middle first because by the time I get out to the outer edge I'm nearly finished. The hard work is over and it just quilts up so easy. One other thing that I want to show you as I'm getting down to this corner is you can see that I pieced the backing and I press it open. I, I do at least a half inch and a half inch seam allowance and then I press it open so it lays nice and flat. And I just wanted you to see that because I don't know that I mentioned that when I first started that this quilt has seams in it. And again, we go right off the edge and we're going to cut our threads and continue on finishing this corner. I'm down to the corner of the quilt and what I'm going to do is sew here and then I'm just going to sew this a little bit across the corner to lock it in place so it doesn't flip around while I'm trimming my uh, quilt. So let me go ahead and just do this real quick. Just go right across that corner. That's all we need just to lock it in place. So now I'll turn my quilt and I'll get all the corners finished and the quilting is all set to go. Here's a picture of the finished quilt top and this is before quilting but I just wanted to show you these are the concentric diamonds or concentric squares that I'm talking about and I'm sewing right inside that diagonal line and then as I come out I just hit each of these rows here. So let me show you what the quilt back looks like at this point. Here's the concentric squares and you can see this line here. This is where I would sew around and sew to the next row and I just did that each way all the way through in order to get those to line up row to row. And it really doesn't stand out significantly. I'm okay with it. I really like the way it looks. What I do want to show you is I want to enlarge this a bit and see if we can look at that thread a little closer. Let me just pull this out. It's not really going to show us the color. You can see a little bit where it gets darker and light, but I'm hoping later, let me try it this way. Oh, a little bit, but it's just fun to use different colors on the back, especially when it's a creamy color. It does have an all over pattern, but um, this creamy background is, is wonderful to use color. And here you can see the seam. I prefer doing my seams off center and I'm just going to make this smaller. So you can see it's just off center and I prefer it to be off center than in the middle. It, it tends to not be so distracting as it, as if, you know, it's right in the middle. It's sort of a bullseye and it just draws your eye. But I'm real happy with how this quilting turned out. So I'll show you the uh, complete finished quilting after I get the binding on once it's all trimmed up and then the uh, binding is done and we can see the corners better. So this gives you an idea of what we're doing and how it looks. It's an easy way to do a, uh, to do a quilt, especially with half square triangles. Here I want to show you where the quilting lines fall. Do you see? We can see along that edge. And so it's about every approximately three, maybe three and a half inches, which is great. That's going to hold the quilt together fine. And it just works out really well working within each of those diamonds. It's nice long stretches to, to sew, to quilt with, so it's not difficult. It's a very practical way to quilt, but it also really looks nice. In this particular case, it's emphasizing that pattern, and that's what I like. Again, with all this busyness going on, when you can emphasize those squares in a square, it really brings out the, the design and just the way all those colors lay together. I think it's beautiful. I hope you enjoy this. 
I wanted to show you up close how this quilting looks, and I think it's wonderful. This is a great way to quilt a half square triangle pattern like this that's set on an angle. And so many of them are, depending on, you know, the design you go with. But this is an easy way to do it because you don't have to, you know, be right on a seam. You're just sort of close to a seam, and it allows for a lot of flexibility. But what I need to do now is get this trimmed up so it's square and then put the binding on. And, oh, there is one other thing. I wanted to show you the back on this. I don't think I've shown you just how the corners went together. You know what? I need to pull my camera out a little bit so you can see, I think. But let me, right here. There we go. So you can see how the corners just went like this. Okay, I am going to make this bigger. Hold on one minute. Here we go. Here's a look of how the back finishes. So we have our square points here, and then as we go into the corner, they just get shorter and shorter as we get down to the point. And then at the very end, I just do a quick stitch like this to hold everything in place. And I think that looks really good. You can sort of see the colors. I'm not sure. They don't stand out as much as I thought they would. They do in person, but not very much on the camera. So at this point, what I'm going to do is square the quilt up so we get our, our nice smooth edges, and then we're going to bind it. Now, I have two different binding options. I found a couple that I, I like, and I'm just not sure which way to go. This sort of tones things down, but this stays with the really lively pattern that we have. All these, you know, fabrics, they're just all over the place. I have some of the Tula Pink Alice in Wonderland prints. So we have, you know, all the critters floating around. We have bumblebees. And so this is a playful quilt with a lot of, you know, fun and interesting fabrics. And I kind of like this almost ribbon candy look. And I think all those colors, look at, they're just perfect. And their exact color matches to a lot of the, the colors in the quilt. And that'll just be a fun one. This one, uh, you know, a little more sedate. But this is for a young woman. And I know that she'll love this. And, and it's just something fun that'll be great to snuggle up in on the couch. So let me go ahead and get set up to trim this. And I'll show you how we're going to square the quilt up. And then we're going to put the binding on. And it's finished. When I'm trimming my quilt sandwich after it's quilted, I like to work from the middle out. And I find that the corners can sometimes tend to flare out. You get your straightest points across the middle. That's why when you're measuring your quilt, you always want to measure from the center. When you're adding your borders or even to measure for your binding, Measure the middle of your quilt because that's the most stable, structurally sound. It's sewed together really well and it's not moving. And that dimension is very accurate. Your corners, on the other hand, can stretch and move around a little bit. So that's not always the best place to start. Start in the middle where you know you're going to get a good straight line and then work out from there. Now, what I do is when I lay it out, I lay it you know, as flat as I can. I have to tell you, I am using my new mat. I have the new Ulfa mat and it's 70 inches. Oh my gosh. I have this old dining room table that I use in my sewing room that's eight feet long. And finally, I have a cutting mat <laughs> that I can spread out on. I can actually get two quilts at a time that I'm working on. I have a pile over here and over here. I love it. And of course, a long mat, I needed to get a long ruler. So I got a 36 inch ruler. And this is great for trimming um, up the quilt sandwich because you want to go across the distance. You don't want to just cut narrow pieces. You want to get a good straight cut across the whole thing. So what I do, let's start here. I'm going to kind of find a middle point and since I know this is my center, that's where I quilted, I'm going to just line the middle-ish of my ruler to that point. Now what I'm seeing here is notice how from here, see how this quilt side goes up and this quilt side goes up? That's where those ends are stretching out. I'm not going to cut all that off. What I'm going to do is just sort of hold this point and pull this down a little bit just so it's nice and straight. Do you see how that's lining up? 
Now let me do the same thing over here because that's just those corners kind of stretching out on me. So what I want to do is get a straight cut, but I don't want to cut off all my quilt. And if this all kind of will pull itself in line, then once I get the binding on, it's going to be great. But think about as you're turning and you're quilting, this quilt top moves around a lot. It gets stretched and it gets pulled this way and that. So we're going to let it lie nice and flat and we're going to put it into the square that we want it to become. And then we're going to harness it inside the binding and it won't go anywhere. So let me go ahead and show you how we're gonna do this. With my ruler lined up, I'm just going to trim from one side to the other, from one corner, and I'm going to come across and trim up all these extra little pieces that are hanging over. Now, once I do this, I'm actually going to just cut this right here since that's a seam anyways and get that piece out of the way because I save these pieces and you just never know what you're going to use it for. But it's a pretty backing. I don't know if you can see that. It's a, a little leaf pattern. It's a bit beigey on top of cream. And I just thought that would be beautiful. There's so much going on on this quilt. I wanted something sort of neutral on the back. So what I'm going to do now is I want to have plenty of this that I just cut and I'm going to line that up on one of my guides, my lines on the grid. And I'm just going to make it nice and straight and I'm going to pull this over this way. And again, I want to make things line up so it's square. And I think you can see all the way to the corner. So I'm only going to overlap my ruler a couple inches on the end. I do want this to line up straight with the edge and I want this to line up over here. So I'm making sure my center is nice and straight where I started. And you see this is extending up, so I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. Again, I don't want to lose all that pretty quilt, nor do I want to lose that seam allowance on those half square triangles, because then I'm going to cut off and just have nubs there, and that is not a good look. So we've got this, I'm going to put my line here and I'm going to line up that corner and I'm going to pull this back down so we're nice and straight and I'm just going to come back just a couple inches to make sure that everything's right where it needs to be and I'll cut that end off. Now I'm going to come to the other side. Whoops, my ruler went with it and we'll cut the other end as well and then we'll turn the quilt and we'll do the sides. So same thing. I'm going to line this up with my grid. and I, I just use a heavy line because it's easy for me to see and I don't get confused between the lines like, you know, line it up over here on this line and come to the other and realize, oh, I'm in the wrong place. That's easy to do. But when you use those heavy, bold lines, then you know you're in pretty much the right spot. Okay, so I have my quilt laid out and you can see to that corner. I'm going to bring my ruler a couple inches past and I'm going to line that line up with the edge of my quilt. I'm going to come here and line up across the center where I cut and where there's just a little bit, I'm going to pull that down. Now, if it were just backing and batting, I would cut it off. But the fact that it's the quilt, the quilt top, and it's actually quilted, that's savable. I want that. I don't want to cut that off. So see how I'm just, you sort of rake it. Just pull it with your your uh, tips of your fingers. Whoops, no wonder I moved the ruler. Or your fingernails, and it just brings everything right where it needs to be. So we're there, and we're here. Everything looks good. And I'm just going to cut across right here. And we cut the rest of this off. And so this will go in the to-be-used later bin. But now look, we have a wonderful, nice, smooth edge here to work from. So that's going to be really easy for when I get to my binding. Let's do this other side here. And what I do is I, I lay it in the middle and I grab the edges and I just kind of pull it out straight. And that kind of gets everything to fall right in line where we want it. And again, I put my ruler in the middle. I go to one edge. I go to the other edge. 
and see right there line up any lines that are on the seams do the same over here and look at that all just lines up really well i'm going to pull this up just a tad and we'll go this way okay and here's a piece of batting where i joined it i'm going to show you that up close here in just a minute i have a bigger piece that uh, you can see easier so we'll do this here and i'm going to line this up on my grid and i want to at least get you know a, a couple feet so i know that this corner is square and if this is lined up straight and then i can put my ruler here and i'm just going to straighten this out make sure nothing is buckling or folding and put this on a line on a seam line like that and that and this needs to go this way and again i'm just pulling everything in line right there see how nice and smooth that is across there and so I'm just going to cut it to the end here and then cut it off. And we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Working from the middle, I think, makes it so much easier because that's the hard part. Once you get that center cut in, then it's easier to go out to the sides and trim those off. So I want to make sure things line up. This is on my grid line. I'm lining that up here. Actually, I'll line it with the center. And I'm going to come all the way over. That looks good. Look at that. Just pull that a little bit. And we're golden. Okay, so I'm just going to finish up the other couple sides. I have my binding cut. And so I have six lengths at two and a half. Three lengths is five. So this is 15 inches. Half a yard is 18 inches. So you can, you have to go half a yard. <laughs> um, you can't just buy 15 inches. I think it's 12 is a third of a yard. So um, I would definitely go ahead and get the half yard. And then you have an extra piece. And if you go ahead and cut it, it it's going to be left over if you just buy the half yard. And then you have some extra strips for projects. So don't worry about ever having too much um, cut two and a half inch strips. You can always use those. I want you to be able to see this up close. And you see right in there where the two pieces of batting connect. And look at that stitch that I'm using. It's, it's a zigzag, but what it does is there's three stitches out and three stitches back. So it, it reinforces both sides. But what I love is this is nice and flat. There's, you can kind of see along the side, there's nothing there that creates a, a bump. It doesn't protrude in any way. And it looks the same on the back. It looks really good. If you look real close, I think you can see where the two pieces meet and they butt up against each other. And I just sew along and it works great. I don't worry about pinning it because it seems to sort of hold its own. I use a walking foot, absolutely use a walking foot. And one of the feed dogs on top and bottom, everything just feeds through beautifully and it works great. So if you ever need to put your pieces together, keep that in mind. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the binding on here. We're almost finished. This is such a gorgeous quilt. Just look at all these wonderful colors piled up together. Isn't that fabulous? And I'm all set to start my binding. I have my strips sewn together. And you can see that I did it on the diagonal. So I did it at the 90 degree where we put it under the machine this way. We sew and then we can open it up and we get that nice uh, diagonal seam. And I just prefer that on binding. When you fold your binding once and then you fold it twice, you see how that seam is elongated over that that whole area. If you do a straight seam right here, then it all bunches up and you get a great big chunk of fabric. And it's really hard to sew through. It, it becomes visible because it's just this big, you know, lump of fabric right there that doesn't need to be there. So everything is sewn together and I'm going to grab an end and start putting my binding on. Now, 
I'm going to begin, this is my, where's the middle of my quilt? There it is. I know because it has this diamond point. Actually, that's the square in a square. I keep calling it a diamond. It's a 90 degree corner, but because it's on point, it looks like a diamond. And what I'm going to do is fold my binding in half. I don't press it first. When you press it, you're putting a crease in. But because think about this when you sew this down and then you fold it over once and you fold it over again the underlying fabric is not going to have as large a fold as the outer fabric and it's very insignificant but you know what that fold line is not going to be in the right place and you're going to have an unnecessary fold that is potentially going to be a problem later because it's going to be a press fold and that's not exactly where you're sewing so it's you know it's a hindrance to me and I, quite honestly i don't see that there's a particular benefit one way or the other if you prefer to do it that way that's fine i'm just explaining why i don't so i'll give myself a good eight to ten inch tail and i'm going to come just below center on my quilt you know i just don't like to do anything right smack in the middle and so I'm going to set this here. I am doing a straight stitch to attach my binding all the way around. And then I'm going to come back and fold it over. And I'm going to use a decorative buttonhole stitch. It's just my favorite way to do binding. So let me go ahead and get my stitches set up. And let's see, we're just going to do a straight stitch here. And I have my walking foot on. I have my thread in place. I'm going with a variegated pink thread on top. You may remember I use sort of a purple and navy blue to quilt, but I don't want the binding to be that um, prominent. I want the sewing on the top of the binding to be less visible, just to sort of blend in. So I'm going to line this up. And I'm going to be right at a quarter inch, and I'm just going to sew just a little bit. And once I'm in and my threads are all set, I'm going to put my quilting gloves on. I find it just so much easier to maneuver my quilt when I have my gloves on. Okay, everything is in place. I have my quilt, I have my binding, I have my gloves. I remembered to hit record. you think after a couple years that I would remember to hit the record button. I can't tell you how many times I still forget. Now, as I sew, I do hold this tight i don't pull or stretch it but i want to be able to make sure it doesn't get loose and floppy because then it makes it very hard to sew if you have extra pieces you know extra folds or waves in there so you know keep it good and snug and just let the feed dogs pull the quilt underneath you'll use your hand to help guide it to keep it straight but it should move by itself quite well I've come up to my first corner and what I'm going to do is sew this to about a quarter inch from my corner. So what I'm going to do is put this pin right here and come over a quarter of an inch so I know where to stop. And that's where I'm going to make my turn. So you can see it's going to be just a quarter inch from that corner. So let me sew to my pin and then I'll back tack a little right there I'll put my pin away and I'm going to cut this and I do cut it pretty close because when you're folding over your binding you don't want to have any loose threads kicking out but you can see right here that I sewed straight through right up to that quarter inch spot now I'm going to turn my quilt get it in place where I want it and I'm going to make sure my binding is folded in half and I just hold it between my fingers and use my thumb for support now at this point I'll just sort of finger crease because I want this to lay flat so I'm going to pull this out across probably about three inches from the edge and I'm going to put my finger right here I want to fold this up so that this raw edge is in straight line with the raw edge of the quilt. 
and then the fold comes down to a point at a distance of the binding away from the edge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of fold that with my finger and then I'm going to bring this down straight down. I do want to leave just the littlest bit of an overhang. Do you see that? How it, it, it uh, protrudes just past the edge of the quilt and then I'm going to come in and do a quarter inch all the way down. And I'm just going to put this in place. If it's easier, go ahead, let me show you how you can pin this. Just put a pin in right here. And then that will give you a little freedom to move your hands, to adjust your quilt and get everything in place. So we're going to set this in right there. And I'm going to remove that pin. I just don't want to run into it on the way. And we're going to start at the very edge come up over the fold and you've got that extra fabric in there so it's going to be thick but your walking foot will do the work and again I'm going to hold this a bit tight as I come around and there we are so I'm going to go ahead and do all my corners and then I'll catch up with you at the end where we meet up with our binding and then we'll flip it over and finish our binding and get it attached on the front. I did want to show you how I do this corner because this has a seam. If you look up close, you can see the sign. Believe me, I did not intentionally get the pink and the pink together. It's just the random way the fabric fell. That just makes me look far better than, than I can possibly do. But anyways... So the seam goes from here to here. So it's definitely going to get caught up in this corner. But what I want to show you is I stopped at my quarter inch. So I sewed to a quarter inch here. And I'm going to pull my fabric up. And you can see there's the seam right there. Just push it down. You know, pretend it's not there. There's not you know much you can do about it. It's, it's going to be there. And just may be helpful to put a pin in. Now, we want a little bit of overhang, not quite that much. So I'm going to bring this down just like that. And I'm going to put my pin in there. Just make sure this is square. There we go. Just to hold it in place like that. There we go. All right. so. We have our fold and our seam is tucked inside. And the only other thing that we'll notice when we're sewing the binding when we fold it over and sew it from the front is as we go over this corner, it's going to be a bit thicker. So when I do binding, I generally, when I quilt, I'll use a 10 or 11. When I do binding, I'll bump it up sometimes to maybe a 12 if the fabric's heavier but in this case if you get seams or if it's particularly um, heavy you might want to try a size 14 even a 16 which is for blue jeans so if your machine is not particularly strong and has a little trouble going through thick fabrics the bigger needle pierces a larger hole which allows the thread to come in and out easier so that bigger needle might be helpful for you. If you're having trouble, that's just, you know, one option you can think about. But I'm just going to go ahead and sew this. I'm just going to move it over. There we go. Get my seam allowance. And I'm going to take that pin out. And then I'll just continue on my way. So don't let the seam stop you. Don't worry about it. Just keep on quilting. I've gone around my binding and attached it to the quilt and I'm getting close to the other side. I'll generally stop and leave like about a 10 or 12 inch uh, gap, but I kind of get a little carried away here. <laughs> I think it's more like 18 inches, but that's okay. It still works. And I'm going to go to the original piece that I sewed on, that where I started, and I'm just going to pin that in place. And I think this will make it easier for you to see. And we're going to unfold it, open it out, and pin it. 
Now, what we're going to do here is bring this piece down and we need to cut this the same distance from here to here from from there we want to do the diagonal I'm not sure how to say those words it's not coming out right but this is two and a half inches wide so I want to cut it two and two and a half inches past the end of my uh, binding where it's cut so one way to do it is bring this down here so you can see where the end of the uh, binding is cut and if you have a two and a half inch ruler, just lay it right on that edge and make sure this is square, that this is nice and even along the edge. And then we're just going to draw a line. And right here, that's where you, whoops, that didn't work, did it? Let's try it again. Put my line there, line it up. There we are. And by putting this line straight on the edge, that way you know you're getting a good square uh, corner here. So I have that and I can cut it off. But I want to show you, if you don't have a ruler, and let's say you're not doing two and a half inches, you're doing a particularly narrow or wide border. What you're going to do is take your width of your border, or excuse me, of your binding, line it up at that edge and you see that's going to line up at the same place where the line is so use this as your ruler you place it right there on the corner get this in line line that up with the corner of the fabric and see how it falls right in place with the line that we drew so that way it's it's a good you know uh, double check to make sure you're in the right place but if you have an odd size binding that you're using, then that gives you the flexibility of being able to trim it to size. Now, this is all that I had left of the binding piece. So my six strips were exactly what I needed. And here's what we're going to do next. I find that if I take a little bit of my quilt and scrunch it up and just stick a pin in there, because if this is laid out flat, then sometimes I have to stretch things to get this uh, two pieces to line up. This way, my fabric is all sort of bundled and it's easy for me to maneuver and get into this corner. So what I want to do is make sure that it's coming down straight from there. And then I'm going to open this up and place it down right side down. Okay, so you see how that fold opens up right here. And actually, it's right side up. I don't know why I said right side down, my mistake. And so we have it right side up. There's the fold of where we stopped. Now we're going to come back to where we started. And we're going to take this one and with right sides together go in the opposite direction. So this is what's going to give us our diagonal seam. Now, a lot of folks will just run these together and run a straight seam, or they'll fold things over and tuck it under and do all kinds of different things. This is not difficult. And if you do it a couple times and learn it, it just gives you such a clean finish. And I just really like it, and I recommend it. Now, the other thing that I'll do is I will probably come in about an eighth of an inch. And the reason I do that, whoops, excuse me, is I want this binding to fit snug. I don't want it to be loose because when you're trying to attach binding that's bigger than the quilt or looser, you're going to have um, difficulty. You're going to get pleats and tucks and things like that, and it's going to be a challenge. So instead, I'm just going to put this right in here. We're going to call this an instant replay. My thread broke when I was sewing that last one. So let's go ahead and try this again. I have my eighth inch. I'm going to come corner to corner. I'm going to start right inside that corner and just come straight through. You do always want to make sure that you've trimmed off your selvages. And then once you're done sewing, actually I'm going to show you, before you're done sewing, you want to, this was an extra piece I used, you want to 
pull your binding to make sure that it fits snug in there. And then once it fits snug and that seam is laying nice, you can come in and then just trim this off just like this, right at about a quarter inch. And, and I do a heavy quarter inch. It's probably closer to three eighths. And then you get this nice finished piece. So what you do at this point is you've got this in place. You've got a nice smooth binding that's going to fit snug right along here. And I would probably pin it in a place or two, finger press this down so it stays in place. And you always want the seam allowance to go in the direction that you're sewing. That way it doesn't get flipped up along the way and, you know, create a mess, a problem. So that's good there. I'll just put a pin in for now and uh, I'll get that sewed. And then it's time to flip it over and we're going to attach this with a decorative stitch on the front. So let me go ahead and get that ready and I'll be right back. And here's what our binding is going to look like. I think this is perfect for this quilt. Oh my goodness, these colors are fabulous. So what we do is we just pick a corner and we start. And so underneath, you can see there's where I quilted it and just sort of tacked it in place so my corners would stay where I want. Here's my seam allowance for adding the binding to the quilt. When I fold this over, I want to make sure it goes over that seam allowance. And you can see that I then get my, my quarter inch binding. Now I can usually do this visually, which is what I do. And, and then I just check along the way, but I'll put a pin in for the first one. So as I'm placing my fabric in there, I'm good to go and everything works out great. So I'm just going to hold this in place. I have my buttonhole stitch ready to go and I keep it on the smaller side simply because it's just to secure this edge. I don't need it to come all the way out. I just want to have just a little bit that comes through that gives it some interest to look at, but it also uh, secures everything well. Okay, let me just get my thread here. And I want to pull my bobbin thread up. I'm just going to pull it up right here so that when I start, it doesn't get caught up underneath. Okay, there it is. And I'll pull this through. Okay. And I'm going to sew this just to the inside of that seam line. Okay, here we go, right there. Once you get started sewing, what I want you to do is feel next to this seam and you can feel the underside of the binding. This fold will be right along this edge. It's actually about right here. So it comes out just a little bit. If you have this folded way over, you can feel that binding way out here and that's not what you want. So use your fingers as you're sewing and just know that that binding is right there. So you know you're going to catch it and you're not going to uh, miss getting the back attached. Now, as I'm sewing, like I said, I'm going to be just right inside that fold and I'm going to go, this stitch goes, let's see, so it comes two forward and then it goes two to the side. It follows those two back and then two forward. So it just repeats this all the way through, and I'll let you take a look at it here in just a minute. And if you take this side of your presser foot, if you have an open foot, and just line it right up along that edge, you're going to get a nice straight line. So I think we can see, there we go. I think you can see that and you can see how it goes along and then it comes up. That's a great way to do your binding and it looks wonderful on the back and see how it just catches along that back edge. When I reach my corner, I'm just going to make sure everything looks good on the back and I have my pins in place. So I'm going to sew right up to my pin and I'm double checking with my finger to make sure that my binding is right where I want it to be. 
and I'll kind of pull that pin out a bit so I know right where it is. As you know, if you go over it with a needle and you hit it, chances are you're going to break the tip of your needle. And the last thing you want is to have a piece of your needle flying around. Usually the thread will catch it, but sometimes that thread can break and that tip of the needle can be a dangerous projectile. Okay, so we're going to come right up into the corner. And so I'm going to sew just past here so when I come down I'll be going right along that edge. So I'm going to put it right there and then I'm going to turn and you can see that my needle is coming down that side and I'm going to pull this down and sew this way but I do want to show you one other thing. I noticed I do this as I'm doing the binding and I didn't mention it before you notice how this all just sort of rolls, right? And you can you can um, come in and press this, but what I'll do is I'll just finger press it, and I'll hold this open, and I'll take my fingernail or my thumb, and I'll kind of go both ways. And what I'm doing is finger pressing the seam allowance towards the binding, but then I'll do it on the front, and I'll just take my finger or I'll just go like this and I'll rub it and with my finger on this side and my thumb on this side it just sort of puts everything in place and it flattens it out a little bit so if you're just going along and you have a, a spot that's a little bit uh, unruly you know just kind of what do I want to say uh, fold it into submission or, or finger press it Okay, so I'm getting close to where that pin is, so I just need to be really careful. And I'm going to come down the corner and pull that pin out. I'll sew down a couple inches so I can fold that over and show you how it looks. All right, let me go ahead and grab this and see how we went around. It got a little thick on that side, but that's okay. It holds it nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. You have the fold here. You have the fold here. And when the binding lays flat, see how you get that nice square edge, that nice corner? It's a great way to do your binding. All right, let me go ahead and finish this quilt, and I think we're going to be done. I've come around to the end, and I'm going to meet up with the first corner that I made. I want to make sure that I get a good, nice square here. I'm going to take my fingernail and sort of let that fabric bury itself down in there. And sometimes you need a pin to kind of get this corner to come out where it needs to be, just like that. See how we line that up right there? And just like that. So now I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to put it right through here because that's where I want it to stay. And I'm going to sew right up here and over. So let me show you how this will work. As I get close, I'm going to pull my pin out a little bit just so it doesn't get pressed under the presser foot firmly enough that I can't get it out. And I'm going to go to about here where I know the pin is uh, inserted. Take it slow because I'm getting close. The presser feet at this point is holding everything in place, or are holding. Use proper English here. And I'm going to come in and do one little stitch right there, kind of lock it in. And now I'm going to turn. So I'm going to lift my needle up and I'm going to hit my straight stitch. And I'm going to realign my needle. Whoops, let's get it straight in the middle. And what I'm going to do is just sew about an inch this way. And that sort of locks everything in place. And we are finished. Look at that. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? 
that just finishes it off so nicely. And there we are. So let me go ahead and get some pictures. I can't wait to show you what this looks like. And here's a look at the finished quilt. It's all quilted around the squares, the concentric squares. It looks wonderful with a fantastic bright border that looks fabulous. This is a great quilt. It turned out so sweet. I really, really like it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're ready to make your own half square triangle quilt. If you do, now you know how to quilt it. Have a great day. As always, it's a pleasure having you join me. Thanks so much.